If you're anything like me and your disability is relatively noticeable, you'll find in high school that people will just start to recognize you without ever talking to you, even if you go to a school with over 500 kids per grade. I was the really pale girl or the blind girl, or if someone had just taken an honors biology class and they did a few Punnett squares, I was the albino girl. I had went to a very small elementary and middle school, so pretty much everyone knew about my blindness since I was three, and it was pretty much just accepted. But what surprised me when I went to a much larger high school was how quickly people could figure it out without knowing anything else about me. A lot of my friends that I had made in my sophomore and junior year of high school always knew who I was, even if they had never taken a class with me or had spoken to me before. I'm very lucky that people were never outright mean to me, but it still was very shocking how much I like stuck out to people and how quickly they could label me. Well, my guest today, Sam Hurley, who is currently a senior in high school living in Georgia, addressed these issues head on by creating a YouTube video called Here's the Disability, in which she shares her experiences with albinism and dispels several of her classmates' false assumptions. In this episode of Legally Blonde and Blind, Sam and I discuss her YouTube video, as well as advocating for disability rights and other social justice issues online. Stay tuned! Welcome back to another episode of Legally Blonde and Blind. I am very excited to have another Legally Blonde and Blind guest, Sam Hurley. Hello. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am so excited to have you. You do so many cool things, and I can't wait to talk about that in today's episode. Oh my gosh. But before we get into it, I have an icebreaker for you, and I know how cringy icebreakers are. I hate them, but this was something I thought that actually kind of relates to my podcast. So I think we've talked about this a little bit before we started recording, but um, I'm guessing your favorite color is purple, right? Yes. (laughs) But okay, so take that color purple, right? And imagine that you're talking to an alien that has a concept of everything in the world except the color purple. What kinds of sounds, smells, memories, objects would you associate with the color purple to explain the concept of the color purple to that alien? Okay, well, first of all, alien, we're going to get you through this because I know you're probably living a really colorless experience. Life without purple is a little bit rough, but I got you. So purple is like, purple is, is meditation. Okay, it's it's lavender. Purple is like you're a spunky gal, but like just enough. Purple is, you know, being outspoken but respectful. You know, purple smells like uh taking a shower at night or feels like you know you know. Purple is like I guess like you know, indie alternative music. You know, kind of like lo-fi vibes. Uh, what else? Yeah, I definitely feel that, especially the showering at night one that 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 I think is very relatable. Yeah, purple, j- basically just purple is the best thing ever. And I'm so excited for you to discover it, Mr. Mrs. Alien. Um, <laughs> you've been blessed. <laughs> yeah, I know. I always find this a very interesting question because I think it really shows what people value. Um, but so anyway, I... Uh, wanted to talk to you about your various YouTube videos and your um, raising awareness for albinism. But before we get into that, I actually, the first time I had ever heard of you was on your guest appearance on Kim of Queens. <laughs> because I uh, I saw basically the, the thumbnail with your face on it. And I was like, wait, is that somebody with albinism? You're like, no way. No I way. <laughs> This is Marissa from the future with a quick message. I realized while editing this episode, we never really explained what Kim of Queens was. Basically, it was this Lifetime show that aired for two seasons a few years ago. It followed a pageant coach named Kim Gravel and several of her clients as they competed in beauty pageants throughout Georgia. So Sam was a guest on one of these episodes. The best way that I can think of to describe it is, I don't know if anyone listening was a Dance Moms fan when it was out. I most certainly was, and I am not ashamed to admit it. Kim Gravel was like a a nice, supportive, and not emotionally abusive version of Abby Lee Miller. The show had its staple mama drama, but it was mostly about building the confidence of the girls on the show, so it was a lot more wholesome than Dance Moms. 
when I was little, I saw toddlers in tiaras, and I wanted to compete in beauty pageants after seeing that for whatever reason. But thankfully, my mom was like, no. But she would have let me compete in the beauty pageants on Kim of Queens. That's, that, that's how wholesome they were. So, like I was saying, the show was only on for two seasons, and after it ended, Lifetime posted the full episodes onto YouTube. So that's what Sam was talking about when she said she saw a video with her face on it. Now, let's get back to it. So the first question I had for you is I was wondering what that was like to share your experiences with albinism at such a young age on TV. Because you were only about 10 when you did it, right? Yeah, I was 10. Yeah, it was really honestly just wacky. Kind of like, I think this is also an interesting story. Like the way that I discovered that this was happening was it was just February. And I looked at my phone and in, the re- in my recommended was like my episode of Kim of Queens or not might be you know like the one that I was on and I was like what the heck like that's my face and Lifetime posted it I clicked on it it had like a million views I was like okay now a million people have seen my tiny face like 10 years later this is not okay so I was like um I guess I'm gonna make a video I was literally at my aunt's birthday dinner itching to like be on my phone and I couldn't it was crazy as a kid the way that that kind of worked for me was um I was very nervous, but I also kind of felt like I was living a dream. I was like, no way, I get to be on TV, like, stop it. Um, I had been watching Kim of Queens for, you know, as long as it had been out, I guess, because I also thought it was cool that it was, you know, centered in Georgia. I was like, no way, Peach State, like, stop. Like, someone wants to watch what's happening here, that's so neat. Um, so I liked it because, you know, Georgian vibes. Also liked it because um, I liked the way that Kim was like, you know, inner beauty and yada, yada, yada. I liked her personality. You know, she's kind of like an oddball. It reminded me of me and kind of who I wanted to be. But also, I guess the experience overall of doing it was really cool because I'd always kind of been ashamed of being different. But then going on the show and having that embrace and having people react to it so positively, like, wow, like, you're just, you're just beautiful and unique. I was like, no way. That's so cool. I remember, like, the one of the awards I got was Best Hair. And I was like, no way. That's so cool. I don't know why I keep saying that. But I just thought it was really neat. Because when you're a kid and you're 10, you go to school. And obviously, like, you you look different. You know, you're going to be a target for, you know, people no, of kind course. of, like, picking on you and being like, ew, why do your eyes move? Like, how are your eyelashes white? Did you bleach them? Like, like laundry accident? What? You know? <laughs> no, so, I've had people ask me that too. I think what was, what was really cool about the show when I watched it is I think they handled it very well. Like they were yeah. talking about how you have to look closer at things. And I think they also did a great job of trying not to like, hide your, your albinism. Like yeah. I'm very impressed that they didn't put fake tan on you. Yeah, me too. With all me that too. I was like, oh no. <laughs> yep. But um, anyway, the main thing I wanted to talk about was your video, Here's the Disability. And first of all, I loved the title. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) So what year of high school did you make that video? Yeah, the year I made it, um, I was a sophomore, I guess a rising junior. So it's been a hot minute, I guess. And obviously, you don't have to tell me what high school you went to, of course. But um, I was curious, like, do you go to like a larger school, smaller school? Is it private, public? Yeah, I go to a public school. <laughs> okay, I was kind of in- I was kind of interested in that because I grew up in a very uh, small public school. We only had about 100 kids per grade. Oh, no way. Okay. So I was very I was very fortunate. I didn't experience a lot of bullying, mostly because I had been with the same group of kids since I was three and they were just kind of used to it. Right. So they had like caught on. Yeah. yeah. So I was curious if you kind of if um, you had that same experience. Or you, oh, no, my had... school's huge. <laughs> oh, wow. Like <laughs> huge. <laughs> yeah. What were some of your main reasons behind wanting to make that video? I think I was just, I always describe it as, like, sophomore year was just, like, not a hard time, but a big learning experience. I mean, it was a hard time, but also it became a big learning experience for me. That year, I had gotten diagnosed with a PRI malformation. So I was diagnosed with this, like, brain defect where my brain was, like, pushing on my spinal cord and, like, exploding out of my skull. Not really, but, you know, I'm just making jokes, but... Um, I've gotten di- diagnosed with that and gotten the surgery and had to like recover from that while, you know, when you're a sophomore, a lot more AP classes are available. So I was taking yes, a lot definitely. of those. Yeah, I was, I think it was in like four or five over the course of the year, six or something like that. 
And so I was, you know, juggling school and then also like in these new classes with these upperclassmen, you know, taking the, you know, they were also in the same APs and I was like meeting new people. And I guess that year didn't really fare too well for me. Um, There was just a lot of, the main thing that bothered me, one thing that really hit me hard was I was at lunch one day or it was like, it was multiple, it all hit like the same couple of days, like three days, multiple people came up to me and they're like, hey, um, I'm going to let you know that this is happening or I want to ask you about this. But basically people are saying that you didn't earn your grade in like such and such class or like in this class or like this happened, like the teacher was like giving you fate, like special treatment because you're blind. And I was like, what? Like, that's not how that works. And I was like, honestly, like I was livid because I was like, are you kidding oh, I'm sure. me? Like, my entire relationship to school has been, everyone thinks I'm stupid because I'm blind, right? So I'm going to be a super overachiever to prove them wrong. No, I I definitely understand where that comes from. I kind of had a very similar experience where you're trying to, uh, in a sense, almost overcompensate. So what were some of the main messages that you wanted to convey in your video? Basically, just like with the, you know, the bullying and the rumors as well and everything, I was just... I made it with a friend. Uh, I want to mention her. Um, her name is Leah Grace. And uh, we were both on the phone talking about how we were just like, oh, this is like too much. <laughs> so we wanted to make the video. And then the message is I just kind of wrote out a speech. And then I revised it a million times. And I sat down. And I was like, okay, here we go. And I wanted to tell people just like in the nicest way possible because I wanted to make sure I like filtered out my anger because anger doesn't really do anything when you're trying to like educate people and be heard um oh of course yeah so definitely like a big part of my message was I don't want it to be angry I just want it to be passionate and like diplomatic um but when I was thinking of messages it's just mainly like first of all like when you make fun of someone for being disabled like that's ableist you don't like no one knows that word but that's a thing like racism it's like queer phobia and that are also not okay so then what makes this okay also just trying to call attention to the fact that like you don't realize how you know one little giggle or one little comment or like spreading a rumor is going to ruin someone's day like I was just in a bad like state mentally to that year and I was just trying to show people like how their words affected you right like we're almost adults like this doesn't this can't fly anymore. Like we got to like, y'all got to watch this and we got to like grow up together and like learn about other people's experiences, like rather than speculating on them. I'm going to, I'm going to sit here. I'm going to tell my story. I'm going to explain these things and give everyone the benefit of the doubt going to do a new school year and just be like, look, like I'm here and I'm valid for my experiences. Like, and the things that y'all said hurt me and were wrong. Yeah. For anyone who is listening to this right now and hasn't already watched Sam's video here's the disability I highly recommend it because I think you accomplished exactly what you said you were very diplomatic you were you you were very you were it was very educational I think too because I think one of the things you touched on you mentioned this earlier was that some people think that accommodations are an unfair advantage and of course that's not the case at all And it's really important to dispel that myth because it's not fair to you for people to equate your accomplishments to your disability. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was definitely I I even forgot about that. I feel like I hit so much of that video. It's like hard to put it in a couple sentences. But yeah, yeah, I definitely um, talked a lot about that, too, and, and did touch on the thing that we talked about just a second ago about the overcompensation about like. Basically, like, it came from a feeling of I can't win. So it was like, guys. I I totally understand that. And another point of yours that I liked was um, you were talking about how when you go to school, you're not putting on uh, war paint when you do your makeup and you're not putting on armor when you're dressing for school. I think I think a really important point is like you were calling people out on their uh, false assumptions about you. I think, unfortunately, a lot of advice towards people who are being bullied is like, oh, ignore it or oh, get over it. You shouldn't have to deal with this in the first place. You should have had to sit down and make a 10 minute YouTube video. Right. About this whole situation. And I think the fact that you were willing to do so really demonstrates your courage. Thank you. And yeah, definitely. I think that that's, I I hadn't even thought about how that even like, sometimes I just write things and sometimes don't even realize like the interconnections of everything, but definitely the analogy of like war paint and armor like I shouldn't that shouldn't have to be a thing and the way that that even ties to what people have told me growing up about bullying like oh just be strong like it'll be okay like kill them with kindness I never even thought about I guess how that was connected I guess like 
subconsciously I knew because I wrote it, but that's, mm-hmm. that, that's a very interesting point. Thank you. No, definitely. Because those are good pieces of advice, but you also, we also should take into account like where are these assumptions coming from? Why do people think this way and how can we change their perceptions of disability? So I was curious too, uh, after the video, after you published the video, it, I think it went baby viral. Is that a good way to put it? Like, I know yeah. a lot of people shared it on their stories. I know Noah shared it on theirs. What was that like? Oh, uh, weird. Yeah, it went baby viral. And <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a, it was a weird kind of like virality because it was like, you know, like no one outside of these weird like niche communities cared, but like mine did so heavily and it was very um I was like oh I did not I mean I was like I guess I did mean for that but I didn't mean for that I was like I don't know this is so spontaneous I was like I'm I'm glad I looked okay (laughs) I like put makeup over my sunburn it was a lot um I was I'm trying to remember I really I think I was proud and I really felt the biggest thing that I had walked away from that with was being happy that I had kind of accomplished what I had set out to do for the most part with the video set out to um, have people hear experiences outside of their own and to feel you know inspire people to feel comfortable sharing theirs and to you know inspire people in my community to listen to what I had to say and to you know to be I guess available to you know hear that and understand it and accommodate it I guess Um, and that had happened I had gotten a lot of messages from people from you know friends people I go to school with teachers people just saying hey like I like what you did and I didn't know this this and this about you like thank you or I had no idea this is happening and I'm you know I'm really sorry like let me know if there's ever anything I can do so just things like that I had gone into making the video with a really negative perception of the world and I came out with the reactions as you asked like I came out with more of a positive perception of the world of like You'll see the negative people walking down the street, but I guess this caused me to see all the positive people come out too and send me their, you know, their love. And that was a really big deal. And then another big thing that I do want to say that the video did, um, which has sent me in like this really big whirlwind of like controversial thought, but a big thing that it led to as well, I really feel is um, teachers taking me more seriously. Obviously, like there's always like not to call anyone out. Like obviously there's always been teachers that like, have been absolutely perfect for me, like done everything that I needed. Um, But I think going into my junior and senior year, I've had way less issue with, you know, getting accommodation. Yeah. Way less issue with it. And, And also just the fact of like being recognizable more so at my school helped as well. Cause I used to have people like people would just come up and ask me ignorant questions or would just like kind of like, you know, even adults just being rude without understanding that they that I was blind and like saying things or asking me questions or asking me to do things they didn't understand no, like, I've had why that I was too. struggling. Yeah. I think it's like sometimes the I've had less instances of like outright bullying and more just people being ignorant or yeah. condescending without actually realizing it. Yeah. But I think what was cool about your video is it I think it's I think it said to people, Hey, I'm willing to put myself out there and I'm willing to stand up for myself and I'm not going to take your ableist crap anymore. And that's really inspiring. Right. I remember. Oh, thank you. I remember I, when I first watched the video, I believe. So if it was your sophomore year, it was my junior year of high school. I remember yeah. when I first watched it, I sent it to all my friends and I was like, like, I, this is really cool what she's done. And this is kind of like, I think she put in six minutes what I would struggle to put in like 30. So I, I really, you. I really appreciate <laughs> that. And I was curious too, like with some of the people who had, you know, bullied you or said ignorant things to you, did anyone apologize to you? Did they treat you differently? Did you notice any kind of significant change? Oh, that's a good one. Actually, dang. Honestly, I still like interact with a lot of the people. Not a lot. I still interact with some of the people that were like definitely on the forefront of my mind when I was making the video. Um, They changed. I really don't know. They haven't said anything to me. I had a lot of people who, like, honestly, I never even had an issue with apologizing to me. And I was like, oh, thank you. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> no need for alarm. Um, yeah, I think the main people that I was, like, I guess, that I, that, that had prompted me to make that video, I not, I don't believe that they um, made it clear that they had learned from it. I guess that doesn't really matter, though, because no. it was just, a, it was a handful of people and so many other people I felt had learned from it. And even, like, you had said, like, how I put into words like some of your experiences that we share like that was really important to me as well like the the amount of people were like 
you just explained my life story and I was like no way that's so cool let's be friends and full of people you know never won them over but it's okay because I feel like hundreds of other people I, I don't know. I was able to form connections with hundreds of other people I wouldn't oh, have otherwise done with. Yeah. yeah. I think you've reached so many other people. And I, I mean, I'm not even sure if like that kind of originally hit you when you first wrote mm-hmm. that letter. But I, I think that's really cool. And so yeah. um, I know that you have a YouTube channel. And I know you've been um, publishing videos every now and then. Uh, do you have any plans for the future? Are you going to continue making YouTube mm-hmm. videos? I do have plans, actually. I'm very bad about it not being scared to, like, post things. Like, I don't know. I have, like, YouTube fright. Like, I'm the most obnoxious person in person. Oh, don't worry. That's why I have a podcast, so people don't see my face. (laughs) Perfection. Yeah, literally. (laughs) Same. We're the same. Um, Published, for whatever reason, scares me because there's, I don't know. Anyway, um, 2021 um 2020 for one um in general but also um i rebranded recently and that's looking pretty cute so i have some new colors going on you know trying to make all my thumbnails match you know um trying to i guess niche down on you know advocacy for like my disabilities and also doing some music things and just you know being a little wacky personality so i guess my plan is to follow through more and to hopefully Um, how I can, you know, reach more people and connect with more people, because that's really my favorite part about it. And I know in addition to your YouTube channel, you also have um, other social media accounts where you post various things about albinism and other social justice issues that you care about. And I wanted to know how you think people who are, particularly those who are allies for a particular cause, um, Mm -hmm. can avoid like performative activism and can actually like can make meaningful change rather than just like sharing a random post oh my gosh yeah this is so important thank you okay um uh, the biggest thing I'd say is like being an ally isn't one action being an ally is a lifestyle um it doesn't have to be like as deep as you might think it is but being an ally isn't just reposting like ableist slurs you should cut out of your life being an ally is cutting those ableist slurs out of your life and like encouraging the people around you to also not say ableist Mm -hmm. slurs it is also it's taking action that is hard like being a true good valuable ally is doing things that push your boundaries because the fact that you are an ally to a group that you're not in means that you're an ally to a group of people who push their who have their boundaries pushed by society every single day right like you know as disabled women like you know society society pushes our boundaries in a multitude of different ways there are times where people you know for me like like sticking with the example I use people will use ableist slurs and I get uncomfortable and I you know say something about it or I just have to weather that storm right but if you're an ally to a movement just posting is performative as you said and not it's just the start you have to take the actions that are described in those posts and actually uh, incorporate them into your daily life rather than just sharing it because sharing it only takes two seconds yeah actually like confronting your relatives about ableist or racist slurs is a completely different thing and requires a lot more effort definitely as if like i guess the biggest line I'd, i'd draw between being performative and being you know a valuable ally is are you talking about the struggle or are you kind of taking it on and doing what you can as someone outside of the community to understand the the barriers that this particular community faces and whether that storm with them? I yeah. think that is extremely important. And I think it's important for, uh, for us to like, be allies for other movements as disabled women and acknowledge Definitely. areas in which we are privileged. Yeah, uh, and uh, I think that's all really important to consider the uh, intersections of different movements. And I think you do a great job of yep. that on your oh, Instagram. You. So before we head out, I wanted to give you the opportunity to um, like share your YouTube channel and your Instagram so people can go follow you. Oh, OK. Awesome. Cool, cool, cool. Um, well, my YouTube is it's just Samantha Hurley. So Samantha and then Hurley is spelled H-U-R-L-E-Y. And that's my YouTube. Um, Instagram is just it's Samantha Hurley. So it's that same name, but with it's in front of it. Um, send me a message, you know, if you liked what we've talked about. Um, you know, hit me up. 
let me know what's going on. Um, I love talking to people. It's awesome. Um, sometimes I'm really bad at being responsive, but I always do respond at some point. Um, like, no pressure, but that would be super fun. So, yeah. I'm so glad that we finally uh, got the chance to talk yes. and to connect. If anyone's listening to this, uh, please check out Sam's YouTube channel. She has some awesome videos, both about albinism and just other crazy hijinks in her life. I think you have a, I think you have a great personality and very uh, you are very entertaining. So thank you. oh thank, so you. thank you again for joining me. Is there anything else you want to add before we go? No, just I hope everyone has a good day. You know, dye your hair. That's fine. Do that. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, everyone, that was Sam Hurley. I hope you had just as much fun listening to our conversation as I did recording it. If you like this episode of Legally Blonde and Blind, make sure to subscribe on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or anywhere else you get your podcasts. As I said in a social media post a few weeks ago, my goal now is to release episodes the first Saturday of every month, so that means the next episode is going to be on March 6th. Also, make sure to check out my Facebook page and my Instagram account at LegallyBB underscore for updates. Thank you for listening, and I hope to see you again soon.